Hello, and welcome to Spirit Island Sundays, where we play Spirit Island on Sunday. Panda Labra believes in civil rights for everyone and in being as inclusive as possible, so any comments or activity actively working against those goals are not welcome and will not be tolerated. You can follow us at Handelabra Games on Twitch or Handelabra on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. You can follow me personally at Logic Dolphin on Twitch, Discord, YouTube, or pretty much any avenue. Sentinels of, the Sentinels of the Multiverse, Bottom of the Ninth, One Deck Dungeon, Aeon's End, Spirit Island, and Sentinels of Earth Prime are all available on Steam, iOS, and Android devices. One Deck Dungeon is also available on Switch, and Horizons of Spirit Island will be released uh, June 29th, I believe. And uh, One Deck Galaxy is in active development. You can find more information on those games at handleabra.com. Yes, that's right. If you missed the announcement, there is going to be the release of Horizon of the Spirit Island on June 29th. Uh, pretty quick development, but it is basically just five new spirits, uh, two, no, three more lands, and I don't know if there are, no, there are no new cards. Or, I mean, the spirits had four power, uh, four cards each, but I don't think there were new fear cards, I think. Anyway, um, yeah, it's set to be released soon. And again, I am by myself this week. Um, was it last week that I did a four-player Horizons game and it it just broke my mind? So let's, let's take a, an easier week. How about that? Um, I'm just going to hit quick play. My usual go-to hit quick play. Two, eight to ten. Let's see what we get. We have a thematic board. Brandenburg Prussia 2 with the Rituals of Terror, with River and Wildfire. So Brandenburg Prussia 2. So no loss condition on each board with buildings, add a town to a land without towns. Uh, during setup on each board, add a town to land number three. When making the invader deck, put one of the stage three cards between stage one and stage two. So same number of cards in the invader deck, just an earlier stage three card. Rituals of Terror. Terror levels are not earned via fear, but by the Ritual of Terror. Do not resolve fear cards during the invader phase. During either the fast or slow phase, the spirits may perform the Ritual of Terror if there is a land with one presence from each spirit. That land has at least three Dahan per player, and the spirits collectively spend three energy total and destroy three presence total in that land. When the Ritual of Terror is performed, earn the next terror level. Resolve all earned fear cards. Push all Dahan from the land where the ritual is performed, distributing them as evenly as possible among all adjacent lands. Put all fear cards into the spear deck. If you run out, earn no more fear cards. Okay. We do have River. We have Wildfire. You can push Dahan with presence, so. We'll see how this goes. Starting in the jungle. Only four jungles, so it's not terrible. Yeah, so River obviously is really nice with River's Bounty to add Dahan. But also, Wildfire's presence pushes any number of Dahan, so... That's nice. And also in the thematic map, we do have a lot of Dahan grouped up over here, so it's pretty easy to set up a ritual spot over here. First, let's think about how we want to deal with the Ravage. I mean, we could try to do three rituals as fast as possible and win the game on Terra level victory, but... Um, we have to get six Dahan in the land, and it has to have three presents from each... Or not three presents each, but three presents total, one presence each. We have to destroy three presents. Sorry. Oh no, yeah, we do have to destroy three presents total, but we do have to have a land of the presence from each spirit. And we also have to spend three energy, but that's not as big of an issue. So yeah. Uh let's see. So interestingly, we can't really stop East One with Wildfire Presence, because that is only going to deal one damage. And the land will not be blighted, so I can't use Firestorm. Uh, nor can I use Threatening Flames. We could use Asphyxiating Smoke to kill the town or something. Uh, flash Fires won't work, it's only... 
one damage, so it won't kill the town that's built. River can do a lot of pushing with Wash Away, but there's going to be a city built in West 1 that we can't stop. So do we let that city build and move the Dahan out? I mean, we can't stop the city from building. We probably want to move the Dahan out to save them. We could just make West 1 be a terrible spot. West 5 build, we push the guys in there. Into West 1. You could play Flash Floods, except we don't really have energy on turn 1 if I do the standard card plays growth. And if I want to get the Dahan out, I have to use our Brownie on an adjacent land. I guess West 8? Since the art has two Dahan, we could just let that be the ritual spot. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm recovering from a cold right now. Um, another thing is we want to gain a power card on Wildfire or just gain energy. How do we gain energy? We're not going to play Boon of Vigor until we have two card plays on Wildfire, I would say. Wash away and whoever's body this turn on river. This makes sense to me. Sorry, this button here. And probably then East 9. Sacred Sight and it's adjacent to more lands than East 10. I think it's actually adjacent to more lands, like strictly more lands. East 10 sees West 6, which is already seen by West 7. Sees East 8, which is seen by East 9, but East 9 also sees East 8, East 4, East 5, so it seems better. I guess hypothetically, we Wildfire could grow into West 8 and kill the Explorer and stop the build, and we don't have to push the town out, but we also don't really have... I guess Massive Flooding could be used to stop a build somewhere else, next, like in the slow phase, stop a build. That's a thought. Like, East 1's not really an issue. For me to grow into East 8, though, I need to do the power card growth. Which is probably okay. Actually, I just thought... Flames Fury... Do extra damage on a river with flash floods. I could actually kill the city in West 1. Next turn we'll have the damage power here, so we could also do damage with massive flooding to kill a city, but that, I mean, they need to build a city somewhere else. I guess there's also a city over here, ideally. Um... So, like, if I play Flames Fury next turn, then I'm playing Threatening Flames this turn. Unless I get a power card that's free if I do this middle growth. Which is not guaranteed. If I grow on the East 3, it is a land with Blight. It's the only land with Blight on the thematic board. But it does have a lot of invaders in it, so it's a pretty good spot for Wildfire to reside in and chip away at these invaders. My growth deals 1 damage, and I'll have Firestorm, which will deal 1 damage. I can play Threatening Flame if I fail to find a card that has Plant and Fire, because that's really the main thing. I need to have Plant and Fire for this to work. Okay, let's see. This is the only free card. 
and it has plant but not fire. Also a land without blight, which is pretty difficult. So that seems like a no. Um, the only card with fire is rights. Push is Dahan, which is good for the Ritual of Terror. Can't really see a reason to do something else. Um, we could set up a secondary ritual spot if I push these Dahan out. I guess East 4 already has 3 Dahan. That's a lot of Dahan. Mainly playing this to kill the town. Seems like a valid spot for that. I guess I could go into the land of Dahan. It's strifed, but a bit coastal. They don't see as many of the inner lands. Exploring the wetlands. Stay out of my territory. If I had prevented the West Eight build, it would not have explored West Nine or East Nine. So. Seems like a misplay, as it were. Last one's gonna be fun. But we're not playing England and we're not playing France, so those buildings don't matter. River needs to reclaim a free card to play three cards this turn, so no wash away there. Wildfire maybe wants energy. Two card plays, energy. Seems good. Could use rights to stop one of these builds if we wanted. Stop the build with a presence. I kind of want to grow into one of those ritual spots so that we could do it. But we don't have any fear cards right now, so it's not really going to be beneficial to us. It's just going to improve the win condition. If I want energy, it's going to be this one, range one, and the only one that stops a build would be East Nine. Actually, this is pretty nice because it sets up two ritual spots. Two lands have six Dahan now. That's pretty good. Flames Fury for River. Kills the city in West 1. We could set it up to also kill the city in East 3 with, with massive flooding. I guess East 4 is going to be the problem next turn. Um... Can I kill East 3 city in time? This is another question. I 
can flame sphere myself, but that's not going to do enough damage to kill the city without having put a presence there. Hmm. I guess flash floods could actually kill the city in East 3 instead of the city in West 1, which isn't doing anything, so that, that affects that. Alright. It would be kind of nicer for, like, Wildfire's damage to be a bit better, but... Wildfire needs more Blight. Actually, I guess Mass Flooding could kill the city in, what, East 3, in East 3 with Flame Spearing. Um, not really beneficial one way or another. I guess with the plus damage from Flame's Fury, we could kill all the explorers in East 4 with Flash Floods and the city in East 3 with massive flooding. And then West 7 is the next problem. But if I don't let them build, then it's not a problem. That works. Each coastal land, push and explore one land inland. In each. Well, go into Wildfire's land, please. And that can't go there. Beasts generate fear. Those are the only two beasts? Let's keep it out of East Coast. <laughs> now to the mountain. I was like, what happened to the city of East 3? Oh. I was going to kill those two explorers with Flash Floods and kill the city of East 3. So I did that wrong, but... Uh, yeah, I, I did the backwards of what I said I was going to do, but this still works. Keep going until lands with Wildfire. Okay, we have six Dahan in two different lands, so this doesn't necessarily need to, uh... Well, I guess putting them at East 2 to kill the towns is fine. This is already set up, but we can reset it up easily. Let's regather the two Dahan back. Stabilize the board, and then we can worry about other things. Alright, so River is on a reclaim turn. This has elements. Slow power, fast, or vice versa, plus three range for, for coastal lands. I mean, what's not to love about that card? So there's no blight this turn. Um, mountains builds. The West Six guy was there from the start of the game, needs to go away. Maybe. Maybe we set up the ritual this turn? We have no fear cards though. Again, there's like not much purpose in doing it other than like making progress towards victory, I suppose. Could set up Blight with gaining a presence here and start spreading Blight that way with Wildfire. Stops build in East 8. Um, 
If I play these two cards, then flash fires as fast. I could kill the town. This I kill the explorer at East Seven, and the six is asphyxiating smoke kills the guy in East Six. I could play three cards if I take a free power. And with Boon of Vigor, you would have, have energy for next turn. <laughs> so let's try that. This is the free power. Not the best free power. I mean, we don't need the pen five this turn. Is really the main thing. Plant and fire are hard to find together. Act of the Joint Hunt when we have a bunch of Dahan is fairly decent. But we don't need it this turn. Call the Migrate to help reset the lands for the ritual. That's not bad. That's fire. I kind of want to do the ritual now. Because we can, like, reset a ritual spot afterwards. So, I need... Well, I can't actually... Ooh. Actually, it's going to be hard for Wildfire to join lands with River if, he, if we start going the Blight route, as it turns out. I guess that's the problem. So maybe I'm not going to do the ritual this turn. I'll just stick with my original thought. Stop the East 8 build. And then... Do this to resolve what's left. We need to go fast. Not particularly. Uh, this is not the best energy for wildfire, but... Something. I also have burned land regrows. Or burned land regrows. The burned land. Don't have plus damage. We could do like flash floods to stop the West Six build. And then none of the mountains are a threat next turn. I guess, since it's hard for Wildfire to grow into River's lands, I'm gonna have to have River grow into Wildfire's lands and do rituals there. Unless I put like a sacred site in like West 8 with River and then Wildfire can destroy presence, but we still have to have three presence total and that's kind of annoying. Maybe I try to set up a ritual spot. Like, East 9 is already River and Wildfire. So just, like, abandon these two lands and just start doing it where I can. And when in doubt, wash away. Okay. Lies. We have some air. I was planning on maybe reclaiming with wildfire so I could discard Call to Migrate and then we just need four more energy. I could discard Sky, Sky Stretches. Because we have reclaimed one, we can gain a power card next turn. Still have three plays. Gain plus two energy for better innate energy. Although the energy is not really an issue. Next normal ravage, building steal plus one damage, doesn't do anything because all the buildings are strafed. On each board, add 
a beast to a jungle without blight, fear of invaders are present. Well, that's not relevant for East 1. Add wilds to a land with Dahan. Is acceptable? Alright. Then we need two more energy. Probably just two from river. Because wildfire has harder energy gains than river. This is the one that generates fear. Once, let's see, so this is stage three, and it's 50 50 basically. Which lands, like each land is a 50% chance of being selected. Um, this land is currently not seen by anything. This land is, well, actually will be seen by West 6. But this is, you know, seen by a coastal later, possibly, so maybe that seems good. Here, all three of these are seen. Which do we feel like? I don't know. Probably the one that's already empty, so it does something. I guess West 7 was going to be empty too. We have a fear card. Jungle and wetlands. throw buildings into wildfire's lands wildfire lands with blight that aren't mountain jungle or wetland so east five to so wash away here makes no sense if we're gonna do it to deal damage or not deal damage but do damage later straight town but that doesn't hit that one so that's unfortunate um i guess Flash floods with plus damage would do it to kill the guy in West 6. Actually, we have massive flooding. That's the other thing I can do. Okay, so I kill this town with massive flooding. Push this guy into the sands because sands aren't doing anything for some reason. Asphyxiating smoke. To kill a town, probably not the one in East 5, so this one. Burned land regrows it is only on a land with at least two blight, so that's the only valid one. And then I guess we set up East 9 as the ritual spot, since East 4 is a bust, it seems. Let's take it from the land that's empty. It was going to be the ritual spot there, I changed my mind. Let's so reclaim here. Plant fire? Nope. Baron? Not gonna do anything this turn. Gift of power? The only card that has fire in it is Baron. Is fire more valuable than plant? It's kind of weird because you do get a lot of fire innately, but you also like having a lot of fire for Firestorm. What the other like what do the cards do? <laughs> what about the cards that do things? Uh, defend at range two is decent, but other than like West One, which is a massive problem for next turn, and this isn't even good enough for it. I guess East One's also going to be a massive problem. Well, not massive, massive. Be defended. I could do Spiron on myself and play a million cards. I will do that. Let's have you gain a power as well.
Maybe this would have been better options for wildfire. We chose the wrong order here. There's no water. These two have sun. We're not, we're not going to hit the massive flooding innate is what that means. Well, I guess that means these are, uh, forget fodder. Gather into a mountains, such as East 8. I could make it fast. I would claim guy stretches. Here is normally great as it's progress towards the victory condition, but in this game, since we don't get tear levels with fear, this one's not actually good. We get fear cards, but we don't get tear levels. Nope, light this turn. Could use this to stop a build. Main issue being that the lands with explorers already have Dahan, so we will kill a Dahan as well. Those resolve East 9 at least. And that puts things into wildfire lands. Circles of Lure is fine. And if this is going to be the ritual spot, then I have to put a fourth presence there. Or sorry, third presence there. I was looking at the number four in card plays. It's going to be that. And then whatever card I want from here. Whatever's bounty, again, just keep setting up that. And once we... Oh, we're not doing it this turn now. Call to migrate next turn to set up rituals next turn, maybe? I can stop the build in East 3 if I wanted with Firestorm. Maybe I want them to build. I can do rights to stop a build. That's fine. Um... Surely there's a town I can destroy there. Those are my two plays. Heated by water. We have two water. Seems like the way to do this would be to forget cards. On the other hand, adding presence is great. Although wildfire adding presence is going to add blight. But it is a may. Beast steal damage. Defend per Dahan. You have no water cards. We only have those two cards, and we only have two energy, so we have to forget a card. If I forget a card in play, then it's no longer in play, so I lose two energy, gain four. So it'd be a card of my discard that I'd be forgetting. And I don't really want to forget those. If anything, I'd be doing a figure. But it's kind of really good in this game for getting wildfire energy. So I don't think I even want to do that. Buildings have minus health until the end of turn. It's not actually that good because we don't have slow damage this turn. This isn't doing damage. 
That's just straight up destroy. Don't have minus health. Could have actually been bad if there was a ravage with one damage, but it's not bad. Actually, I guess the Dahan would be defending. East 5 has Blight in it. It's not a spirit effect, so it will still destroy Wildfire Presence. But if we add a Blight to East 5, it will destroy Wildfire Presence and that Blight will cascade. And then if the West Sands also Blights, this deck is thick, so it's hard to tell like the probability of that without like straight up counting. Is it worth forgetting a card to add presence? Is a question. Like it could be. Like maybe you have to reevaluate. Kind of bad for a river here though. If Wildfire adds a presence, but on the other hand, like, it stops the build in East 9 is a trade-off, although you're going to push the town into East 5. And it does, like, keep three presence there, so, like, not really losing the ability to do a ritual there. for it. No. River is the only option. Guess I'm losing Boon of Vigor. Sorry, Wildfire. This is not seen, so this is the only explorer, as long as I don't put a town in a bad spot. So, these are bad. Those are bad, so... <laughs> West 3 it is! West, East 6 is already seen. East 3... Oh, I guess East 5, there we go. Because East 6 is already seen. But East 5 is fine, because that's Wildfire's domain. Kind of unfortunate that we've had to put West 3 back, but that's the only land that doesn't see West 10 or West 6. Builds allure. I guess actually I could have just done this, but I don't want to. Uh, oh, this has been a mountains, so I can't actually hit that land. But if I put it here. And Wildfire could grow in there, and next turn it will be 3 damage, and it will be blighted, and blah blah blah. How am I solving, like, I guess, actually it just solves East 1 if I do this. This also adds a strike. I'm gonna kill East 6 with Wildfire Presence anyway. Get this finalized. I'm gonna do the ritual next turn. Yeah, 
You do have range here at least. Any other this is the only major issue and it is a major major issue. So let's I guess do that. We do not have a land with two blight. Push a building, or sorry, push a thing. That's the only build, and it's not gonna. I guess it is still building, actually. Oh, but like wildfire could stop it, I guess. I mean, you're doing three damage, and then also you might be able to just like threatening flames away the guys or something. I don't know. Dying in ravage. Not dying in ravage, but it's wildfire land. gonna do much. That land is just terrible. Maybe we shouldn't even try. Reclaim! This is water. I don't know. This energy because you can't afford anything else, right? Threatening flames, and I can push this explorer into here once I get rid of the presence in there. I also have to be able to spend three energy. Let's not forget that. It's an important thing to consider. I need to play another plant card so I can actually remove Blight this turn. And call to migrate to reset the new ritual spot. Maybe East 5. It just needs a river presence. And 6 Dahan, but... Uh, I'm just gonna click this one. Blight removal. Seems good. We don't have a solution to the West one, so. Actually, do I? I have Flames Fury. I don't even think I need Flames Fury. I need to play another Sunder Herd. I need to play a Water card. So I go fast. I deal two damage to each invader, and then Flash Floods kills the, t the two cities. Okay. That's all this West one. Yay! I don't even need Flames Fury for that. I just kind of clicked it because it was plant. The Flames Fury doesn't do anything else. There's no other... I guess I could do Flames Fury on East 5. Because. Okay. Also gains me an energy. Ritual? You get the fear cards first, right? Yeah. Play may gather and explore into a land with buildings or gather a town into a land with city. Well, I could just put the towns back in West 1 that I foolishly pushed out of West 1. There's not that many buildings left. Each player chooses a different land with Dalhan. One damage per Dalhan there. Well, this one's not really relevant. I guess this one, just in case the Ravage does too much damage, in fact, that's the only thing. Okay. And then... 
Distribute them as evenly as possible among all adjacent lands. There's like a million adjacent lands. On each land with least two explorers, push an explorer to an adjacent land without invaders. No such lands. On each board, push a beast to an adjacent land with no blight. It deals one damage there. During Ravage in every land, defend one per Dahan. Well... Wildfire doing wildfire things. Wildfire is such a great spirit. Like, you're using Blight as a resource, but as long as you use it smartly, you can do great things. For instance, this board is mostly cleared because I've been using wildfire very effectively. And we're, st we're still healthy, so I'm doing it correctly, right? <laughs> also, I'm going to be removing a lot of blight this turn, potentially. Yeah, there's only one town left. I could just win the game. That said, I can't actually hit West 3 with Wildfire. But if I were to reclaim Sky Stretches, then River could just kill it with massive flooding, like, very easily. So yeah, the game's over. There's We're on tier level 2. So it's the Blight cleanup turn. Remove, remove. Remove. And then points. And that doesn't matter. Don't place a wildfire presence because points. Actually, does that matter? Doesn't really matter. A little more presence. Not really what I wanted it to do, but it doesn't matter. Except I can't actually hit my damage threshold, so yeah, I do actually need to reclaim all. That part does matter. I don't know I'm hitting the back button so many times when I can just do this. Sure, reaching grasp, why not? Fast blight cleanup? Nope. I guess I could do sky stretches to do Blight clean up fast. Oh, but I have to do this. Oh, actually, reaching grass works. Does it? It does. Okay, so let's. Let's do a thing. We can remove a blight. Try to slow power fast. Remove the blight. Reach and grasp, flash floods, game's over! While the invader settlements have been destroyed and their morale is not strong enough to weather this loss, they depart the island for their faraway home. Difficulty 8, score 70. 10 for victory, 40 for difficulty, 12 for the 6 remaining invader cards, 10 for the 21 surviving Dahan, minus 2 for the 4 blight. 
Cool. Well, that was that game. I'm not going to do second wave because I want to do another quick play because that one was too fast. It was indeed a quick play. And now we have Sweden 6! Oh dear. But hey, we have two uh, Horizon Spirits, so that should be easy, right? Sweden 6. No additional loss condition. Stage 2 escalation. After invaders explore into each land this phase. If that land has at least as many invaders as Dahan, replace one Dahan with one town. We have heavy mining. If the invaders do at least 6 damage to the land during Ravage, add an extra blight. The additional blight does not destroy presence or cause cascades. During setup, on each board, add a city to land number 4. On boards where land number 4 starts with blight, put that blight in land number 5 instead. Towns deal 3 damage. Cities deal 5 damage. Accelerate the invader deck by discarding the topmost card of the lowest invader stage in the deck. On each board, add a town to the land with the fewest invaders that matches the discarded card. When Ravaging adds at least one Blight to a land, also add one town to an adjacent land without buildings. Cascading Blight does not cause this effect. During setup, on each board, add a town and a Blight to land number 8. The Blight comes from the box, not the Blight card. Oh boy! Lots of rules. I'm playing with boards A and B. So no new boards for us today. Because I'm pretty sure this will be the last game of the stream. Unless it ends quickly, which it could. Escalating the sands. Do the new Horizons board segments have associated thematic reverse sides since the physical game doesn't have a reverse for GH? They do not. Since these are based off of the boards on Horizons, which aren't actual boards, they're just like sides of a board. Like, they're pre-set up boards, basically. You can't change the order of them, but in digital you can. Add a town to the land of the fewest. Well, go in that one, because that's in the blade. Okay, so, rising heat of stone and sand. At my, my, at my sacred sites, invaders have minus one health. And sun bright whirlwind. After you add presence during growth, push up to one explorer or Dahan from that land. I feel like these sound effects are so much more pronounced. <laughs> Unfortunately, you don't have, uh, Um, I forget, it's the one that's swamp, I forget if it's mud swamp or something, but there was one that, like, when I opened it up, it went, whoop, whoop, <laughs> and it made me laugh, and then the other one went, mmm, I think that was mud otter, mud otter, that's what it was, mud otter, and then, whoop, whoop, was eyes, but we don't have eyes, we don't have mud otter, so no laughing from me. This sounds... This sounds so majestic. I just wanna like... This sounds like... Like, um... Man, I really wish I had a solution to the problem that I have in front of me. Aha! I got it! <laughs> I'm also imagining like... Some like you know six year old learning show where it's like, do you know what three plus two is? That's right, it's five. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm having too much fun with this. It's also like you know one of those read along books where it's like, and then Jack said, look out behind you. Turn the page. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm done. I'm done. Uh, we have to play this game. It's Sweden 6. I'm not, you know, scared and ignoring what's going on here. It's mountains, okay, so most of these mountains don't have many things in them. That's cool. B2 is a problem, but it's, it's, uh, diseased. But that is still 6 damage in there. But it is mountains, so I can make a sacred site and make it have minus 1 health.
Uh, no, we do not. We'll, <laughs> by we, I mean they. I am a streamer for Handelabra. I do not work for Handelabra. Uh, but they are, are not going to, like, create their own content. They only implement digital versions of the games that exist and only with express permission from the developer. And I don't think Boards G and H are going to ever have a reverse side. I'm not sure if Boards G and H are even going to have an existing board made, unless maybe for Nature Incarnate. Maybe not though, because E and F are only made to support six players. Okay, so let's think. If I do this middle growth option, you're never going to have three fire on the first turn, because you can only play up to two cards on your first turn. Unless somehow you get an extra card play off of, like, Stunbright. We could use Tempest to help out. This would have to be a sacred site because this is range one. You'd also have to have plus range. So if they blight, they add a town to an adjacent land without buildings. So like, if I do let B two go off, like, because it has nothing in there, and for like, stopping a Ravage that's not doing anything is kind of wasted effort when you could stop, like, other builds and stuff. The only thing we'll do is it's, it's going to put a Town in B1, and it's going to put two Blight down because it's a six damage Blight, or six damage Ravage, so it's plus one Blight. But it will put a Town in B1, and that's it. I guess it's not terrible. So let's stop worrying about B2 then. We do have to worry about the Sweden escalation, adding an explorer at stage two, and stage two is like closer because of the uh, of the acceleration. So maybe we need to worry about the Dahan. Unfortunately, because of all the extra crap they put on here, like there's not very many safe lands for the Dahan to be. We can also just stop the Ravage, I guess. Like, why worry about killing the city when I could just stop the Ravage? Actually, yeah, so Colin Herders, I can gather these two Dahan into B7 and push the Explorer in town out of B7. I could even put the town in B5 and it will have one health. Uh, so if I were to deal one damage, the problem is that if I do my Sacred Sight growth, I won't have the energy to <laughs> even play Sweltering. Oh, no, I'm playing. I'm not playing Sweltering. Good luck. I can't play both Call on Herders and Surging Sandstorm. I can do Gift of Steering Heat if while if a uh, Sunbright has energy to kill the Explorer at A1. A1 energy to do one damage. That's a lot of energy, but that's also Tempest of Leaves is one damage for one energy, basically. Scatter of the Winds can help with clearing out one of the lands. There's a lot of, like, potential pushing we can do here, but, like, which options do I want? Let's see. I feel like I want to do energy growth here because all my innate cards are expensive. Um, and if I would like to play two cards this turn, then it would certainly make sense to have the energy to play it. Unless I don't want to play Tempest the Leaves and Branches, and I want to play Gift of Sunlit Air and one other card, in which case I could do this. But I don't know. Um, our presence in A5 makes sense to push the Explorer out. And stop the build that way. So to that end, I could do this growth to do that, unless I want the power card, but I think I want the energy. Plus four energy is really good. I want energy here as well. Is the Sacred Sight going to do anything this turn? Probably not. So let's do this, get power card. 
We want fire and air or earth. So call to migrate or quicken the earth's struggles. Call to migrate can help a lot with preventing Sweden from Swedening. Quicken the earth's struggles is really nice as it will kill towns in my sacred sites. That could be really valuable. Also gives the earth so I can hit the threshold for two damage later. So I think I have to quicken. All the migrate would have been really good, but let's do it this way. And Because of Quicken, I probably want to be able to have a sacred site in a land with many buildings. So like, B7 is building a town. I could do the opposite of what I said I was going to do. Gather the Dahan into B8 and then push that town out into B7. And then there'll be two towns in B7 that I can then use Quicken to kill it. It's easier to get a sacred site in mountains and sands, which is weird for the spirit named Rising Heat of Stone and Sand. It's really weird that Stone and Sand likes Stone and Sand. Really weird. I'm not playing that this turn now. This one... I can always use this to kill a town. I don't need to do it though. Maybe I use this to stop and uh, stop a. Hmm. I guess I was also thinking of gift of searing heat. Well, if I'm gonna get energy, then I can afford that very easily. So do this. Get the heck out of dodge. You have two plays. I don't know what you're doing with your two plays, but you have two plays. Getting any innates if you play Colin Herders. Your innate is range one, push and explore. So I'm tempted to do these two. Plus one range on myself because my range is kind of bad right now. And Scatter and Violent Windstorms should solve most explorers. There's not even that many empty lands. <laughs> but hopefully that does something good. And then have the energy to kill the guy in A1. Okay. Wetlands. I could actually stop the city build in, e in B6 if I do the opposite opposite. It's not going to be really good for really anything. I don't want the explorer in B7 because this isn't going to be defense, this is just damage. Let's throw you in there. B7 is now going to be killed with Quicken. Scatter to the winds and violent windstorms. This is range 3. I guess I could hit B1 with that and stop the build there. So then... 
Yeah, Belt and Storm Sucker just do this. For everything in A8. And then this also protects that Dahan. Alright, so you get the Sacred Sight. I guess we could have gotten you a three card plays, but you're not going to have the energy to play your three cards. Let's give you some energy then. This is in sands or mountains. Go where the city is. Get that one, and then decide. I guess we want to stop the B2 Ravage. That makes sense. I still don't have an innate. That's awkward. Sunbright could play a third card if it's free. If it's not, I take plus energy, so let's do this. Free! Getting a sacred site in A4 could be fun. Sure. Wetlands, wetlands, mountains, mountains. Do you need a sacred site for this? I don't know that I'm using it. Am I using it? I'm not really using it. I guess I'm just not going to use it. Energy! Also pushes Dahan, so maybe save this guy. H2 is coming up. B3 is at risk, will always be at risk. A7 is at risk, always at risk. A6 is at risk, always at risk. I mean, it's a bit risky to grow into the land with the thing, but... What's the worst that happened? I could just destroy the presence immediately. That doesn't even do anything. I guess I just play Grow Through Sacrifice and then I keep these cards and then I play them both next turn. How about that? How about that? This is a weird turn. Crystal land on each board, move towns inland on each board, choose the land with disease, two damage to the invaders, two damage to Dahan. During Ravage in every land, defend one per Dahan. Okay, so it's B3 that's moving. That's good then, that gets rid of that, that guy, that, that threat. Um... Found one per Dahan, so B7 is actually defended. No, it's not. I put the town in there. It's actually three damage. Yeah, so it's three plus one is four. Defend one is three, so it's not enough. What am I thinking? That's silly. I was thinking I could kill the guy, but no, that's not happening. Um, disease is this land. It's gonna do two damage to invaders. That's not gonna kill the city. So I guess to just go into A4. I could go into B5, I guess, if I really wanted. A4 already has, like, something in there.
wetlands again. So the reclaim here can give gift of searing heat to do a damage an A2 potentially, but it's not going to be enough even with the one damage there. Unless somehow you're able to also get a secret site in A2, but that's not happening. Presence growth to push an explorer out makes sense. Push it out of A5 makes sense. Let's do this. Spiran. Seems pretty good. I could potentially like play Spiran. And use that to also play another fire card, and that way I do get Scorched with Waves of Heat innate. So if it's a fire air card, like one of those, then I also get to damage explorers and also deal two damage. I'm gonna have you gain a power so you can play three cards. Let's see, if it's an air card, you get to push up to two pieces. So all of these cards have air. That's cool. <laughs> all right, that was easy. Um, anything that's helpful for the Ravage? Yeah. Like, A2 is a threat. If we do Sweltering Heat, we can stop the Ravage, which stops them adding a town, but that doesn't solve next turn, but next turn's hard anyway. Gather a Dahan. I guess B7 is at risk right now. I don't really want to use it for the effect of stopping a build or turning it into a. Or sorry, stopping a rabbit and turning it into a build, so I could just have them go into A3. does something. Alright, this is a really far growth. Let's stop the B1 build. Spur on myself for sweltering heat. Or sorry, sweltering exhaustion. Very comes a new tempest here that kills the city there. Hard to not it's hard to say no to that with this. That's damage zero. That. Watch that. Target spirit may do things. So that won't work, so obviously it'll just be on myself. Unless, no, I could just give it to. Stone, stone and sand to give an energy. Do I need this to be fast? Oh, I guess I wasn't stopping A5, was I? It does stop A5. I guess I was thinking it was going to stop A5. I just had to do things. Um, in which case, I should have done Tempest after that. A single land with the most invaders, push and explore towns to each adjacent land. Beasts generate fear if invaders are present. 
Push two down from a land with blight to a land without blight. That's a eight to each adjacent land. Okay, so a five still building as the result. Um, explorer into a five is the only reasonable thing. Want to leave the town in there or the explorer? Probably the explorer because it's blighted. I'm just trying to do something that's not. Your card, remove an explorer from a land with Dahan. Not helpful at all because he was dying in the ravage. jungles well we have thus far avoided placing any blight on the board but this next round is probably going to change two damage to explorers only followed by two damage kills everything in b8 doesn't kill b4 kills everything in a5 we could stop it with the same trick. You have to win sped steps. A2, we can't really block. At best, we could put a sacred site there and then do Tempest to kill the town and explorer. I guess we also have Searing Heat. And I could paint. Oh, that has to be another spirit. But we could put. Oh, no, you're not going to have that presence in there. Maybe not. But there is a potential there with Sacred Sight. We just have to do one more damage to A2, and I guess Quicken would do it. Okay, so that would solve A2. So let's kill this, since that's a jungle building with Blight and all that crap. You're reclaiming... Tempting? Tempted to gain a major? Um... But since I think we have the wetlands sorted, I don't think we need the major. Let's keep minoring it up. No airs though. That's a problem. I guess this is forget fodder then. Defend four in a land with Dahan. Or destroy an explorer, blah, 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 blah. Or guardian serpents to put a defend four in the E2. Because we're doing, oh, I can't do sacred sight in E2 because it's, oh. I can't do sacred sight in E2. can put a presence there, but it, you don't have slow power fast, right? That's not you. <laughs> oh no, this says gather, and I can make a power that says gather fast. That works. So I put the presence in there. That has to happen. Let me do this. It's definitely minor. None of these have fire. This one had fire. This one had fire. These two have airs. We kind of did that backwards, it looks like. But oh well. Um, when we're fully grown, we will have two innate fires. So fires issue now but not as big of an issue later this gives me air and earth and it gives a jungle defend for a later turn I'm gonna click that one guardian serpents in case I can't get a two sorted otherwise what I need is gather fast on this 
I also need Tempest, and that actually solves A2 innately. A5. I guess the problem is I can't actually do Gift of Wind's Bad Steps on myself on A5 in that case. And that kind of sucks. Hmm. That is actually a problem. like to kill everything in A2. Earth or Sacrifice, actually. Works. Okay. Oh, but then I don't have enough card plays. I need to play... I need to play Tempest, right? I need to grow through Sacrifice... To give you the sacred site that you need in A2. And I would need Gift of Windsped Steps on Sunbright to be able to push the town out of A5, but with the cards that I have thus far played, I can't do that. I guess I could do Call on Herders to actually caliber into A5. Do that gather okay so you still get kept the wind's bed steps but you're doing it on call on herders so you don't need stinging stance stinging sandstorm now wait did you still need that because that doesn't kill the town oh shit <laughs> you need to get the wind's bed steps to actually kill the town in me too oh that's brutal Actually, it's not to kill the town, it's to kill the city. should have been the major power after all but it was gonna work out and it's not enough card plays here. Easier. But I couldn't have reclaimed that. Also, be nice if I could target myself with Gift of Searing Heat, but it says another, so I cannot.
So at some point I need to ask which land is better to have bladed. A5 is a cascade, but A2 is a double blade. So it's the same number of blade, but one is concentrated, the other spreads. At least the spreading could go into B3, because there's nothing in there. I could have like A5 like remove the blight with Actually that would yeah, because this has the threshold. So I can do both. Maybe if I do that instead. So Tempest kills everything in A5 and it removes the blight. So it'll be two blight here. Which will add a town to either A4 or A1. But we're removing a blight, so we're only like gaining one blight on the board. Whereas the other approach I was trying to do, if A5 were to cascade, it would do one blight here, one blight there, that's two extra by the board. So that's more blight beneficial. Okay. We still need to be able to get a presence in there somehow. We don't need this though. We don't need to gather the presence. Um, because we're gonna kill it with growth and tempest. So then. third card could be scatter to clear out a8 you can defend a3 with drift down and b4 i don't have a solution now could also use colon herders to push things out need the third card here. I guess, like, might as well hit those. But I don't really need, like, I guess two energy to Sunbright. <laughs> and then you can gain a major. Okay. We're gonna reclaim on Stone and Sand anyway. Oh, but I don't have the threshold on that anymore because I didn't play a sun card. Okay. Well, then I guess I'm just going to play Guardian Serpents to lose Guardian Serpents. How about that? I'm going to gain a major power. I'd like to forget a card that's in my discard, right? So... An explorer to a land without invaders or Dahan. Each beast destroys an explorer. Each spirit with three Dahan, three Dahan among all his lands may use a slow power now. Um, that is none of us. Add to a land with beasts. That already has things. Mongols are building, wetlands are ravaging, that one guy will... Uh, but it can't go in a land that has a Dahan. Right, makes sense.
Oh no, A6 is converting. Oh no. This just kills everything. Oh. Easy. This is defended. B4 is definitely not defended, though. So, what's the solution for B4? <laughs> Growth or sacrifice again? Major power. Call the trade, actually. Call the trade's not bad. So I don't have to push any. We already did the escalation in jungle, so the Dahan are safe there. But they could also be converted by Jeff Dugan, so I don't want to. <laughs> Just calling the event card the Jeff Dugan card for no reason. Um, I need to actually learn the name of the card so that I can reference it the way it's supposed to be referenced. I'm gonna leave them there. Not doing any harm to do it there if they're not gonna ravage there. I'd like to gather my presence there, but I can't. This stops a build. This stops a build. You're gonna have a lot of range, so you could put a presence there to push that explorer out. Think like if I were to grow here, or not grow here, but add a presence there, then I could. I'm not growing through, through sacrifice, am I? But I'm gonna have sting, stinging sandstorm next turn as well, if I wanted. I don't feel like I do this. All right, I'm clicking major. I'm doing it. What is it doing for me? There's no f no sun, and this is the only air. What? I will hit the threshold on it. I will not hit the threshold on this one. Not on this one. Not on this one. So now the question is, which one would I want? Um. I am in the sands. Not too many good targets for strangling Firevine anyway. Have a transformation is a bit meh. Poison land is a lot of damage, but it adds a blight. But hey, one blight versus two blight from Sweden potentially. Slow like water, however. I could do that to get A5 into A6. Doesn't really do much. I haven't grown yet, but I could do something else with this. I could grow into A2 and push my presence to gather a city in town. Or B2. Two explorers. Cities that stops the build in B2. B4 is ravaging. I could stop the B4 ravage with this. Although we already have that stop with stone and sand. Blue Lake Water seems like the winner, though. I can lose Guardian Serpents! Yay! Let's... Push this guy out. And then... We just need a water. 
Which, alright, we're doing that in B4, so that solves that. Dawn gives me violent windstorms. So let's wait and see what we want to do there. Reclaim here. I'm going to click miner. This has fire and air. There's no earths anywhere. Damage per blight seems fine because Sweden. Okay. We need to play the defend card for A3. And then... We're probably gonna do this growth into B2 next turn. At which point... Um, Quick and the Earth struggles will. It actually doesn't kill the explorers. But defend 10 at least, because 5, 8, 9, 10, yeah, that'll be enough defend for B2. So I'm not worried about B2. A little worried about A6. Stinging Sandstorm. If that goes fast, can I still do that fast? No, we did that. Oh no, we can't. We still have this. So if I do singing. Stinging. <laughs> singing. This is now Singing Sandstorm. I can't... Singing Sandstorm! If the Sandstorm sings fast, then A6 doesn't build. Now, a Sun on... Sunbright actually gets both next to Nate's. It gets the push as well as damage. So actually I feel like doing Spur On to play an extra card to play Gift of the Sunlit Air is pretty reasonable. We also have one more play on you, and if you play a fire card, you also hit that threshold. Guess what? All of your cards are fire. You're not playing this one. Do we need to play this one? No. Gather and push. Damage per blade. I don't want to hold off on that until I'm in A2. I don't want to use it for A2. Stops the build in A1 if I do this. supposed to oh was I doing this to stop the build in B2 I don't know what I'm doing guys <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> um why did I decide on something and then not do it let's see so go back I have this I wanted to use this for something now I don't know what I'm doing it for like so A6 is solved with Gift of Wind Sped Steps and Stinging Sandstorm. No, it's not solved because it's only one damage. Huh. But it's actually fine if I do this flow like water to gather those two towns into A5. Like, that stops the build. I don't need Stinging Sandstorm anymore, nor do I need it to be fast anyway. So. I don't necessarily need this. I do still need a sun though, so I'm gonna be playing those cards anyway, so. I could do Violent Windstorms fast. Also doesn't do that much. I guess I can get towns out of A7. Just cause that's at risk of Dawn conversion. Okay, that's acceptable then. I do not want to play Stinging Sandstorm. 
I think I still need the earth, don't I? I don't need the earth. But... Oh, I was gonna play that instead. Okay, 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 okay. I think that now works for what I was intending it. Oh, this doesn't need defend anymore. Cause it's gathering a town. Okay. I mean, this isn't ravaging, so. I don't know. In each land with Sacred Titan invaders, blah blah blah. We have four fire. We have a lot of sacred sites. Sacred sites with stone and sand are pretty good. Uh let's see. We also have lots of energy. This has no invaders, this has sacred site invaders, so that's one. Two, three. So we need nine energy to be able to do all the damage. Unless we want to destroy a presence, which we probably don't. So we have four, we need five more. You're reclaiming, so you might as well discard that one. We're definitely guarding ourselves then. I would like for you to not reclaim next turn. You are playing four cards, but possibly five. Can you forge your hand? Currently you can. You have four Dahan, you gain a minor power. Dahan are not in our lands at all. So, there's two Dahan there, but it's not enough. We need four. He's starting right here as well. I need three more energy. I'd like to not spend energy. And I do need to put the Sacred Sight in B2 and then play, like, cards, so... Oh, but I'm not- I'm not gaining a power card next turn. Okay, I'm doing this growth. So you can spend some energy. You need to be able to spend five energy. You're gonna get plus three energy one way or another, so it's plus one, so you... You're gonna have five plus three is eight. You need five. So you can spend all three. So much fear. Each player moves an explorer or town from a land where it is the only invader. Drive is almost full again. I haven't fixed that yet. Uh, yeah, I have enough space. Okay. As long as my recording doesn't break because I'm out of hard drive space, but I'm fine. This guy's dying in a ravage. Coastal.
Stage three next. We're done with escalations. Okay. Minus health is here. And pushing. Pushing towns into a sacred site is generally a good idea. Still at terror level one. Kind of behind on the fear game. Not, I'm not denying that. We've generated 19 fear this game. About eight of which came from this turn. Um. Push an explorer, push up the two explorer towns for each invader pushed by this power, one damage. Sure would be nice if I could push cities. I can't. Sure would be nice if I could push three things into a land with city to kill a city. I could. Um. The question is basically how many lands do I want to defend from the coastal ravage or otherwise stop builds. We probably need to start like generating fear, and the best way to generate fear is to destroy buildings. So. If I can somehow do enough damage in B2, that'd be great to kill everything in B2. We don't really have enough damage, but we do have like... Sunbright's reclaiming, we have Tempest. You don't have a sacred site nearby though, and plus range doesn't help. Unless you were to then like grow through sacrifice to make a sacred site and then use Tempest at plus range. So you have to devote three card plays to that. But given that there will be a sacred site in B2 and that the city will be at minus health, and if I can do a damage there some other way, then everything in B2 dies. I also have like flow like water to like move things around. That could also help. It's not gonna be able to move everything out of B2. But if I push the three explorers out of B2 into B4, that kills the city there. It's really weird. Three, three explorers killing a city. And then, like, B2's almost solved. I think I'd do that. I also could have done that in B2, but I'm gonna work on B2 another way anyway. Here, because that's more relevant. Okay. So this is always happening. We have our hyper at eight. Super duper hyper at eight. Activate. We're playing flow like water, probably. I'm sure there's a use for that. Gather the explorer and city out somewhere else. Go through sacrifice to make a sacred site in B1 and then kill everything in B1. It's going to be a minor. 
No sun and air. Steam vents. I take sun. Probably just to forget it later anyway. I do not have the threshold, but I want the sacred site in B1, so that's fine. <laughs> Actually, if I put the sun down, I get the th I get the threshold, but I think it's too late. Actually, that doesn't work the way I want it to, because it's not going to have the minus health anymore. Ow. Um. However, this... I forgot the other thing here that says I have plus two range on all my power, so I don't actually need to create a sacred site. Interesting. Because this will have range innately. I feel like water to still get the explorer into B2 and then kill everything in B2. No blight, right? Well, B2, but that's not happening. And <laughs> I can devouring ants. Actually, it doesn't work in B anyone. Sun air does give me the threshold, I do, so I do want a sun air of some sort. So either fast gather push. Plus one range. I'd like to probably be able to have the uh, town built before I do the power. So I guess it's just gonna be plus one range. I don't need it, but you get plus one range. I get plus one range. And I will push this guy over here. And kill him all. Sort of. Now I kill him. We can skip a build. I guess I'm skipping a build because it's. I mean, I don't have to, but I'm definitely doing this for fear. Um, this land is just not doing anything, so let's just stop that one. Also, sees a seven or something. Next normal ravage buildings do pl or towns do plus one damage. Beasts destroy explorers. Add a dahan to a jungle or wetland. Dahan. Remove an explorer from a land with dahan. Stops build. of things we could do. Lots of damage there. Feels like we're very close to winning. Although we're still at tier level one, but five fear off and there's enough buildings to get to no buildings victory, but there's still a lot of towns. They can kill all the cities very easily. Purifying Flame plus Stinging Sandstorm kills the city in A2. Scorched with Waves of Heat is probably just going to go right here, the building there. Anyway. 
Yeah, that definitely kills everything in there, right? This is 4 damage first, and then it's 1 damage each invader. Yeah, so that definitely kills everything if I order it like that. That's good. I mean, might as well just kill the city. So if I can kill... Oh. Yeah, no, we definitely win. We definitely win. This sacred site makes this a lot easier, because I'm going to push these three explorers, or sorry, these three invaders, and I'm dealing three damage in this land to three towns with one health. Man, Sweden 6 is so easy. <laughs> I just have to heal this, the town in A2 and I win. That's literally all I need to do. And there are many ways I can do it. Uh... That was a lot of dead towns for a single power, right? That was a nice combo. Doesn't really matter what I do here. I mean, it sort of matters, I guess, technically speaking. I guess I should figure out, do I have a means of killing this town right now? I definitely reclaimed one, so I have all my things, so yeah, it looks like I do one damage there. It's not quite there, and you don't have you do a push or gather fast, and then you can do that. Okay, yeah, so that works. Okay, that works. I pushed you in the wrong spot, doesn't matter. Fast. Also, this just does it by itself. Yay! We beat Sweden Six. And we beat it with the Horizon Spirits. All the invader settlements have been destroyed, and their morale is not strong enough to weather this loss. They depart the island for their faraway home. I think in the end, there's only one turn that we put blight on the board, didn't we? Just this blight, wasn't it? Because, like... They added extra blight to, board, to land 8 on each board, right? And land 5 started with a blight. And we removed it from here at one point, I guess? So, okay, cool. 62 points, 10 for victory, 40 for difficulty 8, 8 for the 4 remaining invader cards, 6 for the 13 surviving Dahan, minus 2 for the 5 Blight. This is almost not even a Sweden game. With Sweden, you generally have less Dahan because they convert Dahan, and you have more Blight because they add more Blight. But we kind of, they kind of failed in that regard. So, yay yeah, us, we did it. We saved the universe, we saved the island. All right. Well, that will wrap things up for this week of Spirit Island Sundays. Be sure to check out the other streams we have going on on this channel. Generally, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. is Handle Lobber Live with John, but next week he is going to be streaming tomorrow. So tomorrow, June 26th, he will be doing Handle Lobber Live. And next week, July 5th, the Wednesday. But later this week, Thursday, will be Dolphin's Dive, and that is also the Horizons of Spirit Island release. If you would like to play a multiplayer game with me, Logic Dolphin, be sure to reach out to me on Discord or otherwise contact Handelabra on Twitter or wherever, because I would like to have a celebratory multiplayer game with viewers in celebration of Horizons of Spirit Island's release. I will accept people of all skill levels. We do not have to play Sweden 6. We can play a base level game. If you want to learn something live on stream, you can do that too. I'm totally flexible. I just want to be able to play with people. 
every Friday at 4 p.m. is Luck of the Seamus with Seamus the Hug Monster, but I believe he is off this week. He's traveling. And then next Sunday at 1 p.m. is also Spirit Island Sundays. A handle of our products include Sentinels of the Multiverse, Bottom of the Ninth, One Deck Dungeon, Anne's End, Spirit Island, and Sentinels of Earth Prime. They are all available on Steam, iOS, and Android devices. One Deck Dungeon is also on Switch. Horizons of Spirit Island will be released this Thursday, June 29th. And One Deck Galaxy is in active development. Check out handlelobber.com for more information. Follow us at twitch.tv slash handlelobbergames for the live streams. Twitch.tv slash logicdolphin if you would like to support me personally. But that is it for this week. Thank you all. Have a good one.